Welcome to the Crimson Engine. My name is Rubidium. This is going to be a mini course on white balance and how Canon cameras deal with white balance, the different white balance settings, and how you can make sure that you're always shooting in a way that gives you uh, maximum control of your white balance, maximum accuracy of your white balance and of your colors, and also uh, a way to sort of hack white balance and use white balance and, and how it works to get the uh, um, to exercise creative control. So I'm shooting on the C500 Mark II, but the white balance um, settings on this are universal across almost all of the Canon cinema cameras, as well as uh, the R, the RP, the R5, and the R6, and hopefully the R3, which isn't out yet. So you see in this bottom corner, I have the little K, which stands for Kelvin, um, and it says 4900. My key light here is set to 4900, the camera is set to 4900, and as a result, I should get perfect white balance, right? Because my, my light and my camera are both agreeing on what is white. Not always, because you can see I also have ambient light coming into the room. Um, that ambient light uh, is the sun, which is 5600, usually, depending on the cloud of day and depending on what it's bouncing off outside. Then it's hitting the floor, a patina on it, which is very warm, um, and then it's bouncing up a slightly warmer light. So uh, if I want to get more accurate white balance, I have a couple of options. I can use auto white balance on the camera. And to do that, I click my little um, function button and dial down to AWB or auto white balance. I'll do that now. You see it's uh, changing 45, 46, 44. Uh, it's expecting something white to balance to white balance, not surprisingly. Here I can give it something white or a gray card. This side's a gray card, this side's a white card. And as you see, now it drops down to 44. Now it climbs up to 45, to 46. It's also adding, you see here, um, you see here, plus two, plus three CC. CC is color correction. And that is, uh, just like the white balance is the um, warm and cool, or the uh, orange and blue axis vertically, the CC is the purple and green axis horizontally. So what I could do now that it's balancing off this card, because once I take the card away, it's gonna try and auto white balance. It's, it's, it's a constant process. Auto white balance is ongoing. As you go into different white areas, the camera will keep guessing moment to moment um, what the white balance is. Now that can be a good thing or a bad thing. Usually it's a bad thing. It means that the, while you're in the middle of a shot, you know, your, your actor or your talent might be talking and a red truck drives by or a blue truck drives by um, and suddenly your shot is gonna deviate wildly in white balance because the camera's always guessing. What I could do is now that I'm pretty sure that my white balance here, according to the camera, is 4,400 and minus two, I could go into my function, go back to Kelvin, and say 4,400 minus two. Now it's set that way and it's not gonna jump around. I would have to do that for every new environment I go into, but at least I'm in control and not the camera. What if I have multiple um, white balance scenarios? So I'm going from uh, you know, interior to exterior to interior, and I don't wanna to have to go through this process every time, or I'm planning a shot which is gonna go from interior to exterior, and I want the camera to only white balance once and stick to those new values. Well, Canon gives you an A and a B preset white balance, um, and you can see them here. Kelvin, I've got A and I've got B. You'll see, oh, now the white balance is really green. Um, you'll see this little A, it has a symbol next to it, which has a circle and then a, a, you know, almost like a greater and a less than sign. There is a button on the side of the camera that corresponds to that next to the white balance button that if you push it, it will begin that um, white balance process. Once it's found its white balance, it will lock it in. So let's try that. So once the A has stopped flashing, it's decided that this is 5400 uh, with minus 6cc, which 
is pretty extreme. Say I change the color temperature of my key light here and make it very, very warm. Let's, uh, let's try that again. So it's thinking. Now it's come up with 3400 uh, minus 8 cc. So as you can see, uh, it's accurate some of the time, um, but it, it does allow you to preset areas and go between them. The other option you have are the camera's inbuilt daylight and tungsten. And at least on the C500, those are customizable. So if I select daylight in my function setting here, which is the little sun, you can set it to 5600 or 5400. And then if I want, I can adjust my key light to um, that same temperature. And then I can also adjust the color correction, the plus or minus um, purple and green. Plus is gonna make it more purple and minus is gonna make it more green. So those values will stay in the camera. So if uh, you want to um, dial in multiple versions of the sort of the Kelvin area, um, you can also store those in the um, daylight and in the tungsten. Now, when, when I went to 3200, you'll notice something really interesting. Uh, I've changed my key light to 3200 and now my skin is still looking like skin more or less but the background the daylight is now very very blue and this is the origin of the uh, orange and teal look where people used um, tungsten balance stock to light people with tungsten and then let daylight come into their um, come into their environment through the windows giving it that blue hue now mine isn't complete because I have this top light up here which is still in daylight, and I have my eye light, which is probably messing up my um, color balance as well. So now you have, you know, I can, and then again, I'm close enough to my key light that I can dial in what I want my skin to look like. So I guess this would be called white balance hacking, using um, uh, differentials between your key light and your background to give you um, creative looks. If you have an RGB key light, um, LED key light, you can also do add purple to the key light and then dial it back in um, into the camera. So that's gonna make your background really green or vice versa. So let's resettle this so we're not looking at something crazy. So here we are back at um, 5,000 uh, with zero uh, color correction. Um, my daylight key is still giving me the proper um, color correction. I, and I can tell because my skin and my eyes contrast my blue eyes against the uh, I, I can see um, color fidelity in both of those and I'm also getting that warm extra warm background because it's coming through and hitting the um, the warm floor uh, giving me color correction so to what extent do you trust the monitor coming off the camera that it's an accurate representation well cameras uh, you know they often have this difficulty where um, you know, when the sensor changes temperature really quickly and things like that happen, you need to, uh, you're not gonna get an accurate um, color temperature, meaning you're gonna have your light set to 5,000 Kelvin, your camera set to 5,000 Kelvin, and it looks good. Then when you look at it on your computer, you have to dial in color temperature again. Now, if you're shooting RAW, that's not an issue because RAW records separate R, G, and B channels. And so you, the color temperature is just how you mix those things. But if you're shooting XFABC or MP4, H.265, MP4, uh, um, you, uh, you're, you're, you can only shift color balance so much before the colors start to, to clash and come, sort of come apart. I mean, you're actually losing color because you're pushing color on top of other colors rather than changing how they're mixed. So in order to get the most accurate color balance, what you wanna do is black balance your camera. So let's go to here on the C500 Mark II, it's in uh, menu 1.6.1. And you can tell it's grayed out. That's because uh, the camera's recording and I have a lens on. To properly auto black balance the camera, you need to stop recording, take the lens off, put the uh, lens cap on, and then hit that auto black balance, it'll take about five seconds. And then once, once it um, resets, you should get much more accurate color balance. So that is a look at the different modes for white balancing Canon cinema cameras.
Most of the time, if you're within about a thousand Kelvin, either above or below, you can rectify that very, very easily um, with your DaVinci Resolve, Premiere, Final Cut Pro X. Uh, the easiest way to do it is have something white in the frame. Then you can just put the color, cl the color um, picker on that white and the uh, program will balance your shot for you. If you're shooting an all black scene, very dark, it's definitely worth bringing something in. Um, for something like this, uh, you could probably, I could probably white balance off my shirt pretty accurately because as you see, it's more or less a neutral gray. Thank you very much for watching. For more tutorials like this one, check out canonmasterclass.com. I have a ton of uh, camera tutorials for every Canon cinema camera, as well as a ton of other filmmaking classes covering things like uh, getting clients, uh, advanced lighting, uh, project blueprints, product shots, um, off the grid filmmaking, and many, many more. I will see you next time.